What is going on, YouTube? Northeast Ohio Sports Cards. Here to talk some basketball today. And I'm going to split this video into two parts. We're going to go Eastern Conference today, Western Conference tomorrow. And we are primarily looking at buys for the playoffs. So I'm going to narrow the focus down to a very few specific teams. And I'm also approaching this with the caveat that if these players don't pop off in the playoffs, I feel like we're buying in at a good time regardless to hold through the playoffs and into the summer with a ramp up to next season. So it's a dual purpose mindset. If we guess right, because that's basically what we're doing. I mean, this is essentially turned into another form of sports betting, essentially, at this point of the season, especially because you're buying guys with a specific purpose that you think they're going to win a couple rounds in the playoffs, have a couple really big games, and prices are going to pop off. And maybe they make a deep run to the finals or something crazy like that. So you're basically NBA futures betting, essentially. So I want to make sure that I am looking at players that... If worst case happens and they get bounced in the first round, that is not going to be an absolute bloodbath on their prices due to the timing of when we're buying in on these guys. So that's my thought process going in. And like I said, today we are going to look specifically at the Eastern Conference. I have a handful of players pulled up. I'm actually more excited to talk about the West than the East. Uh, there's a lot more things that I like when it comes to Western Conference players than Eastern Conference players, but I think that's just because more teams are live in the West. The East is very limited uh, into the teams that I think have a chance. So uh, long-winded intro, but YouTube stuff down below, like comment sub, and then we'll be spending a bunch of time on Market Movers. Uh, so the links to that are down below as well if you are interested in checking out their tool set, which I obviously highly recommend. Great set of tools. So. Let's rock and roll. And if there's someone I miss that you think is an obvious call, let me know in the comments down below. But I don't I don't know. Like I said, I, I have a very specific set of rules for the purposes of this. So let's break this down. I have the standings pulled up. Uh, I think there are three viable teams in the East, and it's I don't really think it's that much of a discussion, to be quite honest with you. It's the Sixers, it's the Nets and it's the Bucks. That's it. Can the other teams be frisky and maybe make some noise or whatever? Sure. Sure. But I don't see anyone going on a Heat-esque run this season in the East. I truly believe it is one of those three teams. And I think health's going to play a factor. You know, can the Nets get fully healthy by the time the playoffs roll around, you know, and, and actually keep all three of those guys on the floor at the same time? They've been playing extremely well with just two of them rotating in and out. Now Harden's out, but KD's back. So it would be nice to see them firing on all cylinders. The Sixers now have Embiid back, so they look like they're fully formed selves. We'll hope that he could stay healthy as well. And then the Bucks just keep on bucking along, just doing their thing. Any one of these three, three teams, I think, are 100% viable candidates to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals and make it to the NBA Finals. I truly believe two out of those three teams will be the Eastern Conference Finals. Let's talk about some Flyers teams, and then we'll get into specific players. And, like, spoiler alert, we're not going to go. These are going to be fairly obvious guys. But I, I just feel like, and the other thing I should have caveated this with is, if you have, and I mentioned this in yesterday's video, you know, if you have any faith at all that the modern NBA market still has a pulse, then this, I think, is the last chance to get into these guys. You know, we're five weeks out, four to five weeks out from the NBA playoffs now. And that's part of the reason why I'm also specifically targeting guys that are kind of in dips. And I think have good potential for the start of next season. That way, like I said, if we whiff, we're kind of protecting ourselves a little bit. And it just becomes a longer term play. As we've seen in the, you know, when I did the football market analysis and the NBA market analysis, 
And even from what we've seen so far in the early days of the baseball, sometimes the cheapest price you buy these guys are in season and then hold them to the start of next season. And that's where you actually see your greatest returns. You know, the football market was weak, 11, 12, 13, et cetera, for a lot of guys. And that's kind of the stage of the game that we're in in this NBA season. So now it's going to come down to who plays well. So sorry for the uh, slight distraction there. So let's talk about two non-obvious teams. And this is really more about the two individual players than anything else where they're kind of at in their pricing cycle. That's the Hawks and the Celtics. The thing I like about the Hawks, and I don't think they're making it more than a round, and they have been playing fairly well, is where they sit right now. And can they stay there? Now, the East still has a ways to go, and there's a lot of wiggle room here. But if the Hawks can end up in the four to five seed, I think they have a good chance at winning a round. And I am really curious to what Trey Young's prices do in a playoff series where they can win a round. If they stay four or five, they would play the Hornets, the Heat, or the Celtics, most likely. I like them against any one of those teams. Could they win? Maybe, maybe not, but I like their chances anyways. Whereas if they slip, and then you got to end up playing the Bucks, the Nets, or the Sixers in the first round, or heaven forbid, deal with the play-in game, that's a different story. But as we'll see when we get to Trey's prices, I don't mind him as a hold to the start of next season either. The Celtics, I don't so much believe in their team. They've been a mess all year, but I believe in Tatum. And we'll see when we get to Tatum's prices. I just think he's kind of like at his floor. Maybe he has lower to go, but it's more about Tatum than the Celtics when we talk about them. The other teams are all fine, but there's no one that I'm rushing to go out and buy. You know, the Bulls are... Probably going to, I think the playing teams are relatively locked. I don't see, you know, maybe the Raptors sneak in there. The Cavs sure aren't. The Wizards aren't. The Magic aren't. And the Pistons aren't. So really, it's either the Bulls or the Raptors. I don't see the Pacers falling out. Uh, and, you know, the Raptors have been playing okay, but the Bulls have also been playing meh. You know, there's no one on those two teams I'm running out to go by. There's no one on the Pacers I'm running out to go by. There's no one on the Knicks I'm running out to go buy. I don't want to invest a bunch of money in the Julius Randle. Sure, Quickly's cool, but I think he's more of an offseason target. Uh, the Heat, same thing. They just seem like they've been in a funk all year between injuries and COVID and everything else. You know, I'm not looking to run out and buy Butler, Hero. Bam is constantly undervalued, but he's a big guy, and he's kind of been having a meh kind of season. And the Hornets are injured to all hell. So that's kind of a quick takes on the other teams. So let's look at some individual players and dig in. The first one, and one of my favorites from the East, is Embiid. Uh, His stuff has come down quite a bit since his most recent injury. His PSA 10 prism is only 800. I say only 800, but... uh, And his select concourse is only 450. That seems pretty cheap, uh, especially at a pop 403. And his prism is a pop a thousand. When you get into these older guys, the prism pop count matters a lot less. Anything pre 2018, it's less important and you don't have to focus it on as much. But that's the Embiid prism, the Embiid select. And we can see. So right before his knee injury, his prism was at and around a thousand dollars and the select was up towards seven hundred. So what I like about this play is twofold. One, I really like Embiid, and two, the Sixers are really good, and three, we aren't buying up here at the peak. We're coming in at the dip. Now, it looks like his prices are starting to creep back up again since he's been back, but I just like that we're not buying at the top of this. We're buying post the dip after his injury. Sure, we're not buying back here, and all these charts, by the way, I ran from Christmas Day up because that pretty much covers the entire NBA season, so we could kind of see how they've been running. Yes, back on opening night, he was three, 380 and 160 on his Prism and Select. That chip sailed a long time ago. Um, he was probably one of the best preseason buys out of all the players in the NBA market. But like I said, I like Embiid. And plus, there's an outside chance he could get MVP, maybe. I still think it's the Joker, and I think it's Joker by a mile. But 
he's probably the second or he's in the top five, probably maybe a little higher. It depends. Depends on how people treat his injury. Regardless, though, I like Embiid's prices where they are at. Like I said, I like that we're not buying in at the peak. We're buying in lower. You know, they're a lock for the playoffs. They're a lock to win at least a couple rounds, and he could just have some absolutely monster games in the playoffs. So I really like Embiid's prices right now, especially if, um, let's see, I'm looking at this Sunday afternoon. So there's no uh, 650 is the cheapest buy it now best offer on that select. So that's a far cry from 450. So maybe you still can't find one at this price, but they've definitely been selling around there. There's a 430, a 455, a 455, a 365. Boy, that's nice. And a 450. So plenty of sold around there. It's just a matter of finding one. Um, and I like the prison prices too. So Embiid is first on the list. Second, his running mate, Ben Simmons. Uh, I just always think this guy's criminally undervalued. I own like one of his optic PSA 10s, but his stuff has kind of jumped around and stayed kind of flat for most of the season, other than his optic. For whatever reason, his optic just gets no love. Uh, of course, it's the one that I own. But when we come down here, you can see current prices. His optic sits at 123 on the current average. And there's I looked at this. There's a bunch of buy it now sitting there for 150. Uh, so you could probably scoop this easily at that price. To me, that just seems awfully cheap. The interesting thing here is, is that his optic actually has a higher pop count than his prism. So maybe that's why the price is so depressed on this. Uh, but his prism at 425 and either one of his selects at 160 or 194 for the premiere. Uh, if you didn't want to spend a ton of money and get into his prism for 425, I like any th two of the selects or the optic for the current prices that they're sitting out. Population count on all this stuff really doesn't matter because it's all pretty low, though. The select stuff is pretty low. The premieres only is sub 300 if that's your thing that you're into. But I'm not going to get tied up in population count as much because. Most of these guys were looking to buy and then hope that they pop off and then we can sell in the playoffs. Now Simmons isn't super flashy. He doesn't put up big scoring numbers, but I think in the playoffs, he could stuff the stat sheet. And I also think they just have a decent chance of making the ECF. So we'll see what happens. I definitely like Embiid way more than Simmons, but I am intrigued for like a low dollar. I mean, 125 for his optic feels really cheap. Same 160 for the select concourse just feels cheap for someone at Simmons's level. Uh, you know, I know he's not, he's more known for his defense than his offense, but still this just seems cheap for a second star on a very likely Eastern conference uh, finals team. Let's talk about the nets and the nets are really tricky because their prices a are extremely high already. And it's, I feel like we've missed the window uh, we talked about Kyrie actually about a month ago or so. I said that his stuff was a little too cheap and his stuff has popped off since then. His PSA 10s up to 1800 right now. Uh, it was down pretty low 1300 and then under a thousand for a while. I like the Nets. They are probably the final or probably the favorites for the NBA finals. I just don't know that I want to put $1,800 into a Kyrie Irving base prism so i just feel like this is a player and the nets as a whole maybe are a team that i don't want to say we missed the window on but i just don't know if i like buying in on the upswing here on Kyrie. sure and maybe i could end up looking foolish on this one and you know they win the finals and his stuff goes up to three grand it very well that absolutely could happen could this be a 3k card by the time we get to the eastern conference finals or the nba finals sure that is 100 percent on the table but like i said i just don't know if i like the idea of buying on this upswing now if you already bought in you know you could let it ride or you could sell it however you want to play it but i like Kyrie as a player i like the nets as a team i'm just not sure that i like this price for him uh, especially looking at this compared to some stuff we're going to talk about tomorrow. Um, just if I'm going to drop close to two grand on a player, there's other places I just think I would rather spend it personally versus putting all my eggs in the Kyrie basket. 
like I would rather have two and bead prisms for the same price as this, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. That's why I present the data and let you guys make the choices yourself and always encourage you to do your own homework. Don't just listen to me. Don't just listen to other YouTubers. Take what they have to say. Do your own homework. See if it lines up with your thoughts and then make a play. That's simple. Let's talk Harden. PSA 10 Prism, and this is going to be a pricey one. This is his tops. I'm sorry, PSA 10 tops, not Prism. Uh, there's only 177 of these. I probably should have pulled the PSA 9 to make this a more realistic. But this thing's sitting at about $6,000. The only nice thing here, this was up to 9000 for a while. This really got up there. Uh, and this was a steal early in the season. Uh, this was all the way down to 2000 and spiked all the way up to 9 k But it's on its way back down. So he's hurt right now. It's a hamstring, so he should be back in a couple weeks. I don't remember what the exact timetable was on that injury, but it's not like he's going to be out for months or anything crazy like that. But once again, putting 6K in the Harden, if that's your play, let me look at PSA 9s. I should have pre-pulled this, so that's my fault but we'll do it live Um, because maybe the PSA nine's the play PSA nine still 1200. That seems fine. Uh, the multiplier is a little stretched here, but that's kind of normal on this older stuff. And there's way more PSA nines than tens. Uh, and this peaked up at 17, 1800 ish. It looks like, and now is down to 1200. So the only thing I like about this is that you're buying post the peak to a degree. I mean, obviously, it would have been nice to buy back here instead of uh, here kind of is what it is. It's not the worst play in the world, but once again, me personally, I'm not running out to spend 6K on a Harden. If I have 6K to spend on a card, I'm going to go buy, try to get like a LeBron Topps Chrome PSA nine or something like that. That's just me personally. Take it for what it will. But if I didn't talk about all the nets, commenters would have been angry. Um, so I'm not looking to run out and buy Harden, but I think it required due diligence just to show the charts on these guys, because I think it could be a play. It's just not a play that I'm looking to make right now. Personally, once again, I would rather stay in the 300 to a thousand dollar range and buy multiples. Uh, and play that game versus putting all my eggs in the hardened basket. Now, if your budget is a lot different, that's a whole different story. If for you, a $6,000 Harden is like, for me, a $500 Embiid select, then cool, do your thing. Um, but I think most people are more in the $500 to $1,000 range, $100 to $500 range, like a Ben Simmons versus a 6 k Harden. But I wanted to make sure I talk about a little bit of everybody. Next up's KD. I pulled his factory set white, the more common of them. Uh, the black and the orange are extremely expensive and extremely rare. Uh, this has a pop count of about 3,000, just slightly under. PSA 10s of these are sitting at around where are we at right now? At just under $2,000. These peaked up uh, at around 2,400, 2,200, dipped down, went back up. This is a good example of I would probably rather buy like three of these versus one Harden personally. Uh, but that's just more my style. So once again, some of this comes down to style. I do like the fact on this KD that we are not buying up here and up here that we're kind of in one of his little dips at sub $2,000, you know, even all the way back in. January, this was selling for around the price that it is today, 1800 ish. And he's had multiple, you know, he got a big run at the Dallas card show. Uh, Sasha T was buying a bunch of his stuff. So he had, had a lot of attention on him. Um, so his prices have spiked up twice and came down twice. So I actually like this point on Durant, at least for this particular card, to maybe get back in on for sub $2,000 if this is the budget that you're looking to play in. If you wanted to go higher end on Durant, we obviously have his tops Chrome. 
PSA 10. And once again, this thing has been a little bit more stable, but you can see it got its big run up, got all the way up to 12K, but is now back down to sub 10K, sitting down here at 9,000, 9,500. If you're playing in this ballpark, if you will, I don't mind as much throwing shelling out the money on a Durant Chrome compared to like a Harden, just because Durant has multiple championships uh, and is, you know, in that more upper echelon of players. So if something goes sideways, getting stuck holding a Durant isn't like the worst thing in the world. Now, obviously, he's had his price correction. He was way too cheap back here in the early part of the year. He got his big jump up. But I like that we're buying on the downside of that, not the front side of that. If you're looking to get into that. Personally, this is well out of my budget. I would be more looking to get into something like this at a cheaper price point. Um, This is more like this obviously has more ceiling. But once again, you know, these are sitting at about 9K right now, almost 10K. Would you rather have that or four to five of this? And I'm once again, from a long term perspective, I think you would rather have the Chrome from uh i just want to get into it and look to move it in a few months i don't think that's a bad strategy either buying four or five of those because then it frees you up that if they go up enough you could sell off three to four of them hold one make all your money back and then some and then you just have a free kd rookie laying around that is generally my buying and selling strategy on how i like to do things buy multiples wait for the spike sell some of them off, and then free roll the remaining one or two cards or whatever it is. So that's the Nets. Uh, They're probably the favorites for the NBA Finals, in my opinion, and probably the favorites to win the championship out of the Eastern Conference. Uh, Out of the three teams, I think they are the most talented. But their stuff's priced accordingly, in my opinion. Other than these couple KD cards, I'm not really big in on Harden at those prices. I am not big on Kyrie at those current prices. You know, maybe you could find like a Kyrie PSA nine or a select or something a little off market that you can get into for cheaper, but at least his prism, I'm not looking to dive into. Uh, Let's talk about the, I talk about this guy all the time on the channel, just constantly slept on and he's having an absolutely fantastic season. He's had a little knee injury lately. So his stuff has been kind of flat and he's been trending down all season. And that's Giannis. Uh, Giannis is having an MVP season. No one's going to give it to him because he's already won two in a row. But go look at the guy's numbers. They're fantastic. The Bucs look pretty good. Not as good as they have in years past. But I think they've been kind of experimenting with some stuff in the regular season uh, in regards to like defense and incorporating Drew. They have hot. They have Drew now. They have they've always had Middleton. You know, they picked up a couple extra role players on that team. DiVincenzo coming, you know, chipping in here and there. I don't know that they have the firepower to beat the Nets. And I think the Sixers and them in a series would be a bloodbath. I don't know who would come out of it. But I just still think Giannis' stuff is too cheap. Um, I'm going to keep saying it, and I'm going to keep saying it. I I, I just think his stuff is really too cheap for as good of a player as he is. He's a two-time MVP already, and if he ever gets an NBA title, his stuff will skyrocket. Uh, he's already got the the two MVPs on the resume. And then if he adds a title to that, which would probably also include an NBA finals MVP on top of that, that would really take him to the next level. I do think that he hurt himself re-signing in Milwaukee for the long term. And the Mets didn't do him any favors loading up. So we'll see what happens. But at his current prices, I, I just have to imagine that if they make a run through the East, which they should do. I guess it would depend on who they match up with in the second round. If they get one of the upper echelon teams or not, how the bracket actually falls out, but his hoops for 700, his select for 1600 and even his prism PSA 10, that's an expensive one at 3,500, but I've always been a big fan of this hoops. I love the photo on this hoops. PSA 10. Uh, I actually like it better than the select and better than the prism. Um, you know, he's just kind of standing there in that one. He's got this weird dribble crouch down thing on the select. This is a clean looking card. Uh, 700 bucks for that PSA 10. I I just think is criminally undervalued. All these, the population counter fairly low is prisms, 2,500. The hoops is 1500 and the select is 1100. So you're really not gaining a huge edge here one way or the other. 
on pop counts. And then you can obviously look at PSA nines, BGS nine fives and all that jazz. But he's been on a downcline or downtrend the entire season. The prism's down 18%, down 8% on the hoops. Selects held up the best at 3%, and that's since Christmas Day. Um, and the trend continues that Select and Prism are getting closer and closer together. Um, my preference here, just due to the price point and also eye appeal, I'd be going after the hoops if that was me. And once again, this is a guy that if they flame out in the playoffs, I'm going to be perfectly fine holding Giannis in the next season. You know what I mean? I, I can see him getting a run up before next season starts in prices as someone's going to be behind him uh, and his prices should go up in the September, October, depending on when the season actually starts, August, September, et cetera, that he would get a rise back up in prices. Um, but a lot of it's going to come down to what he does in the playoffs. He needs to get that monkey off of his back. But I do think given the talent that Giannis is criminally underpriced. I know a lot of people, it's a hot button. Giannis is a hot button topic. Um, like I said, I do not agree with him staying with the Bucks. It is what it is, but you can't deny his numbers. The guy's been playing great. Uh, let's get to the two wild card ones really quick here. And like I said, these two guys are more about potentially holding to the start of next season than it is actually for the playoffs. Uh, you know, maybe you get lucky and one of the teams gets hot and wins two rounds or something crazy. I don't necessarily see that happening. But if you believe in Trey Young, I think this is towards the bottom of his prices. You know, he had two spikes in the preseason or one in the offseason and then it dipped back down again and then one right when the season first started. You know, the all time high on his prison PSA 10 uh, was 823. That is all the way down to 400 bucks now. So it's lost 50% off its all time high down 40%. To me, Trey feels like the classic case of we're going to look at charts when the NBA season starts or right before the NBA season starts next year. And we're going to find the low point. And in my opinion, it's right now. Like, I just feel like this window for Trey is the low point for his prices. So I like the twofold approach here. You can get in on Trey at all time low prices with the potential to move some in the playoffs. You know, maybe he spikes up. Maybe you get a couple optics or some select, whatever. Pick your poison from the list. Whatever you want to get into PSA nines, BGS nine fives, HG niner nine point fives, CSGers. GS Sears, pick your three letter acronym. And I just feel like you're buying at near bottom prices on him. He pops off a couple games in the playoffs. It's Trey Young. He could have two or three 40, 50 point games very easily. If that happens in the playoffs on our national spotlight, I just have to imagine that his prices pop. So then you could either sell into that or sell some of them off into that and then free roll the next in the next season. Or let's say they get a bad matchup in round one. They get bounced. They slip down to the play-in game, get bounced out of the play-in game. I don't think buying a Trey select at three or 350 or his prism at sub 400. If you have any faith in the market at all, I just don't see how that doesn't go up for next basketball season. You know, I just don't see how that's not selling for more than $400 come the beginning of next NBA season. Now, like I said, this is all prefaced that we think that even with the world getting back to normal, that the card market is still fine. I don't think we're ever going to see the days of we saw last summer with, where prices were astronomical through the roof. But even if it just gets back to its normal cyclical cycle that you can make 30, 40, 50 percent by buying in the dips and selling at the peaks, that's still fine. You're still making really good money. So that's the play with Trey Young. It's a twofold. You have, in my opinion, you have two ways to get back out of it. Either he goes off in the playoffs and you sell there, or you hold and sell at the beginning of the next season if you want to. Uh, and we've seen Trey's prices can absolutely spike. I mean, it happened just a few months ago in early January. So we'll see what happens. 
the last one, and once again, same premise. I don't like the Celtics for winning a round or anything, but I just think Tatum stuff has gotten too cheap. His optics down to almost two hundred bucks. Uh, you know that's down twenty eight percent. His prism is down to almost five hundred. His select concourse is down to three fifty. His select premiere has been holding well. That's the only one that's done well. Uh, it's actually well more than his prism now, which makes sense because it's, there's only 190 of them in a PSA 10. Uh, but this is the same thing, except I have less faith faith about the Celtics popping off in the playoffs than I do the Hawks, actually, just due to seeding a little bit. And I could flip around a little bit, but the Celtics have just been in a malaise all year. But I really like the idea of buying Tatum now at what I think, what my guess is, is that this is one of his low points. And then if they don't even say they didn't even make the playoffs, just riding it all the way through till the start of next season. I think this is where we're at now in the market. At least that's what the football chart showed us. And it looked like that's what the NBA stuff's a little bit weirder because of you COVID stopped the season halfway through and all that jazz. But if we could draw anything at all from the NFL data, if you're willing to put faith in that, that these are the low points for a lot of these players is actually right now, not in the off season. So we'll see what happens. Time will tell, but so those are the guys. Sorry. It was a longer video than I thought that it was going to, but there's a lot to kind of cover here. And I kind of wanted to do a more in-depth deep dive on this. So let me know. Is there someone obvious that you're like, Oh my God, I can't believe he included or didn't include or whatever. Uh, but remember, keep the caveats in mind. Uh, guys that aren't going to burn us if we have to hold them through the playoffs to begin next season. And I went with more established players, not like your fringe guys. Uh, tomorrow in the West, I might get a little bit more fringy and like a few more cheaper plays. Uh, but to me, the East is just kind of boring because it's just those three teams at the top, really, in my opinion. Uh, and a lot of the guys are pretty expensive already. I do think there's a lot better positions to get into in the Western Conference. And the Western Conference just excites me way more than the East does right now. So uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And we will catch you tomorrow for this same style video, but covering the Western Conference teams. Peace.